Today I'm going to be showing you three budget home theater options with surround sound and a great picture starting at under $500. Hi there, I'm Nils with Learn to DIY and if you're new to the channel, we cover all sorts of home improvement projects, everything from smart home installations to home theater equipment to repairs of all sorts around the house. So be sure to hit that subscribe if you want to see more. Now, all three of the home theater options that I'm going to show you today have four basic requirements that I think are essential to any home theater setup. Number one, they have to have 5.1 or better surround sound. Number two, they have to have a powered subwoofer. Number three, we want a big screen. We're not talking 50 inches or 60 inches. We're talking 100, 120, 150 inches as far as the screen. And for that, you're going to want to use a projector. Now, last but not least is the ability to switch different inputs. So with that, let's jump into our first setup. Now for our lowest cost option, I've actually set up a temporary demo room here. This is not something that I've set up as a permanent fixture or anything like that, but I want to show you how easy this is to put together. And this system all together comes in at under $500 and consists really of just three things that you need as your main components. So number one, behind me I've got the Vonkyo projector. This is the V630, which presents a native full HD resolution image. It's bright, it uses an LED bulb, which means that that bulb is going to last for years and years and years, and you won't have to worry about that thing burning out anytime soon like with a traditional lamp on a projector. So that's one key ingredient. The other one is this Vizio soundbar setup. This is not just a traditional soundbar, but it actually comes with the two rear speakers as well, as well as a powered subwoofer. So you get the full 5.1 experience in a very compact package, and those are $250 brand new, but they are very frequently selling them refurbished or reconditioned for $179. So we've had ours for a couple of years now, it paid $179 for it, and it works great. We get that full surround sound effect, we get a good deep rumble. We use this one in our bedroom with our television, but you can use it with a projector or anything else. Now the third ingredient that's crucial to being able to switch out your input devices is an HDMI switcher. Now this HDMI switcher conveniently comes with a remote control. You can connect up to four different input devices and then you just connect an HDMI from your one output on that switcher into the soundbar and that's what provides the surround sound for it. And then you run an HDMI, probably a longer one, from your soundbar's output to your projector for the image. That way, your projector is only having to worry about the image, your Vizio soundbar surround sound system is taking care of all the audio, and then you've got your switcher, which will switch between the different input devices that you have. So really a pretty decent setup. It's not the highest quality, and that's why it costs the least, but it's actually pretty decent if you have a smaller living space, a bedroom that you want to do something in, or you're just getting started with home theater. Now, as I mentioned, the setup that I've got here is very temporary. I really just put this together really quick. Obviously, you're not going to typically use a tripod to hold everything up, but when you add in a projector mount and the 25-foot HDMI cable and everything else, this still comes in under $500. So it really is a screaming deal and something that's just a great way to get started if you need to. Now for our middle tier budget home theater system, this one comes in at right around $800. Now at that price, this is still a real bargain, but it does have a few features that put it a little bit above the lowest tier system that we've got today. Now included in this system, we've got a full surround sound package with a Yamaha receiver. Now this Yamaha all-in-one package includes your receiver, your five surround sound speakers, and your powered subwoofer all in one package for $480. Another great thing about this is it's a little bit upgradable for the future. So if you wanted to purchase at some point either a 4K projector or a 4K television, then this thing can handle 4K just fine. You get that beautiful surround sound. You've got 725 watts to work with, so it's got a really decent amount of power to it. It has Bluetooth built in, so you can just stream music from your phone, for example, and it's really a pretty good system that's all in one. The other upgrade on this package is having an actual projector screen. Now, projector screens start out at a very affordable price. This one that I'm showing here is actually about $33 and it's 120 inches wide. So a great size that you can get for a home theater setup and a really affordable price. They do go up from there. You can get larger screens, of course, and I've even got a video that I've produced right over here for making your own HD screen for under $100 that's basically as large as you want. Mine in this case is 142 inches. I'm using the Carl's Flexi Gray material, which provides great contrast and looks really sharp, and it's pretty easy to do yourself with some basic tools. 
Now for the projector on this middle tier system, I've chosen the Vonkyo V630 projector. This is the exact same one that we're using in the lowest cost version of these home theater setups that I'm mentioning today. And this one is full HD, gives you 1920 by 1080 native resolution. When you're shopping for projectors, you always want to look at native resolution. Not what it supports, not what it's capable of, but what is native. Because you can buy a really low resolution, really a piece of garbage projector that technically supports 4K. And that just means that you can connect something that's 4K to it, it will show an image, but the quality of it will be whatever that native resolution for that projector is. And if it's 640 by 480 pixels, then that's all you're going to get. But if it's native 4K, or if it's native 1080p, then you're going to get that full experience just as advertised. So be sure to look for that word native when you're shopping for projectors. So this middle tier setup is really a bargain at just over $800. With that, you get the 5.1 surround sound, you get your powered subwoofer, a full receiver that's 4K compatible, you get a full HD projector, your screen, and all the accessories that you need for about $809. So not a bad setup. And again, links are in the description below if you do want to check out any of these products. Now for the most expensive and most capable of our three budget systems, I went over to work with my buddy Austin who wanted to install a new system in his house and so we worked together to get a home theater system that he's thrilled with and does a great job and has a lot of power and an excellent image. Yeah, so guys this is like Christmas for me having all of this stuff here. Um, I love home theater stuff. Before I kind of had a big TV and a sound bar and honestly I spent probably as much on that as I did for all of this. but. I had the speakers um, wire ran a couple years ago when we had the basement finished. The reason that I haven't done this project is because I'm good with audio, I'm good with tweaking it, but I don't like cutting into nice newly finished walls. That's really the only hesitation that has caused me from not doing myself is just the cutting and, and the fine details like that. Now in Austin's case, he had a pre-wired basement. He actually had the basement finished in his house and had all of the speaker wires run and had a tube mounted in the ceiling so that he could run it to a projector. And so all of that was pre-done, which is really nice. But there are a lot of great options if you don't have that luxury. So for example, you can tuck most of your speaker wires underneath the baseboard along your carpet in your rooms. If you need to, you can even remove that baseboard and put them completely back in the wall underneath the drywall. You can also take advantage of speaker stands that conceal those speaker wires coming up if you place them in different locations in the room, or you can use speaker mounts to mount them to the wall if you want to run the wires in the wall behind the drywall or the sheetrock. Now with Austin's home theater, we decided to go ahead and leverage in-wall speakers. So he selected some Polk Audio in-wall speakers. These are a really nice set of speakers that are going to produce a really robust sound. And he's got seven of these guys. So our two fronts, our two centers, our two backs, and then the center channel. And then separately, a powered subwoofer. Now in Austin's case, he really wanted to see that power from the subwoofer. So he purchased this more expensive $374 12-inch powered sub and this thing really cranks. There is a 10 inch version of this that also is really powerful and it saves you about $125. But if you really wanna feel that bass, you've gotta invest in a good bass subwoofer or maybe even a couple of them. In fact, you can actually get a couple of 10 inch Polk Audio subwoofers that are both powered and put those in two locations if you wanna go that route and it's still less expensive than this 112, but this 12 is really gonna crank if that's the kind of feel you're going for. Now because he has small children at home, he wanted to make sure to do these in-wall rather than wall-mounted or anything external. And mounting in-wall speakers is a lot easier than most people might think. If you know where your wires are, and he's got pictures beforehand to make sure that he knew exactly where everything was when it was finished. So with those, we marked out the exact locations for where each one should go. We try to always put the speakers at ear level if possible. In his case, we were able to put almost all of the speakers right at ear level, including that center channel speaker. Once we had all of the locations marked out, we used the templates that come with the in-wall speakers to trace around where we needed to cut out and used a stud finder to plan this out to make sure we weren't gonna cut into an area where there was a stud behind it. It's important that you put all of your speakers in between the studs in the area called the stud bay. You can use a box cutter to cut out the drywall for the squares. You can also use a drywall saw or a jab saw to do the work and it will make light work of it. And then easiest of all is if you use an oscillating tool to just buzz right through and cut out on the lines. 
and you're just going to cut out that template and then each of the speakers has a little winged arm just like you would find in a lot of the things that mount onto drywall and it's just going to pucker up real close and hold that speaker onto the drywall and hold it perfectly in place. Now as for subwoofer placement, this is really a personal preference. A lot of people like to have it in one front corner of the room or as close to the center of the front. Others like to have it in the rear of the room or as close to where they're seated as possible. This one's definitely a personal preference. I've seen people put it any location in the room. So let me know in the comments below where you would put your subwoofer or where you have put your subwoofer if you have one. Now many people prefer, like in Austin's case, to put their media equipment somewhere out of sight and out of mind. For example, in his, he's got his projector in front and then the media equipment, his receiver and Apple TV and other devices are in a closet back in the back right corner of the room. So that presents a couple of issues. Number one is the length of the HDMI cable that you'll probably have to run to your projector or your television. And number two is the remotes. A lot of remotes use infrared technology and obviously you can't project them or click on the remote through the wall. So I wanna tell you about our sponsor for today's video that helps take care of both of those issues. If you're running up against either of these issues and you want to take care of it the right way, this is the O-Ray HDMI extender with Ethernet. I've actually been using this setup in my personal home theater for a while now because it gives me a lot of flexibility. Number one, it actually comes with an infrared transmitter and receiver that goes through the Ethernet. So instead of running an HDMI cable from your source location to your destination, you actually run an Ethernet cable and then you put one of these boxes on either side. You only need to power one end or the other. It uses the technology of power over ethernet to control the opposite one. And then with that, you've got HDMI inputs and outputs on both sides. So I just use a short HDMI cable like you see here to run between the box and then my projector, as well as the box on the other end and my receiver. And with that, I can run this thing up to 400 feet. Yes, you heard me. 400 feet of length, as much as you need. Obviously that's more than most people will need. Now with that, I've got a receiver for my infrared that I can point my remote controls at and it will transmit that signal through the ethernet out to the transmitter on the other side and from there it will blast that onto my receiver or other equipment. So if you need to safely and conveniently run an HDMI over a long distance and you want to leverage all of the latest technologies that are available in HDMI, including 3D, Dolby Atmos, surround sound, and everything else that comes with that, then this O-Ray system is actually a fantastic kit, and it will give you that peace of mind knowing that you can actually run that with Ethernet, and it's fully upgradable in the future as well. Now when it comes to receivers, Austin chose a Sony Dolby Atmos 7.2 channel receiver that supports full 4K and just has all of the bells and whistles that you would need for a home theater system like this. Now this receiver packs a lot of power, it has a lot of features, and it comes in about $350 brand new. You can also sometimes find this one on sale and get even lower prices. And finally, for the projector, we've got an Optima Full HD projector here. This one comes in at about $650, and to get a decent quality image for a 4K projector starts to get pretty pricey. I do have a video that you can check out here where I purchased $7,000 worth of 4K projectors and compared them all side by side to see which one had the best image and was the best bang for your buck. So the Optima that Austin is using here is bright, it's powerful, it's sharp, and he's pulled it back quite a way to where he's getting a 150 inch screen on his wall. It's pretty incredible. Now because he has kids, he decided not to put a projector screen up, but just to cast right on the wall. If you wanna do this, you do have the option of purchasing projector paint. It's actually a special paint that's used just for finishing that area, and it has the right reflective material or characteristics so that you get a sharp and crisp image on any wall. It helps if you do have a completely smooth wall so that you don't have the little divots and orange peel and different things like that. So keep that in mind, but there's a lot of great options even without a screen if you wanna go that route. Now one last thing to mention about the setup that Austin has here. He has, as you can see, his center channel located in the middle of the screen. And so he has a paintable screen over his center channel speaker, which works out really well, but you can purchase acoustically transparent projector screens. This just means that it's a material that's porous in just the right way to where the screen itself will look like normal and project a really nice image, but sound coming from behind it is allowed to pass through openly so that you can still hear that center channel loud and clear. 
Now at this point, I've put together several videos that cover all sorts of home theater issues, everything from building your own projector screens like the one I've got here, to finishing a basement from scratch like the basement I'm standing in now, to running long HDMIs and how to get the best results and quality from that. So be sure to check out the playlist over here if you want to see more of that. And if you enjoyed the video, please give us a thumbs up and thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.